Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Foodie Friday. I'm thrilled to be back with you. I've been off and away from Foodie Friday for about a month now because I've been so busy finishing up writing and producing my most recent digital ebook collection, Falling Into Raw. And since that's still so really fresh on my mind, I want to share a couple of recipes from that with you all today. So I've got two recipes chosen. I'm also going to make a third recipe from my book, Raw Food Cleanse. Um, and I've got everything prepped in the raw food kitchen. Today's theme is comfort Thai food. I think you're going to really enjoy it, especially if it's turning into autumn where you live, if the weather's starting to get a little bit cooler. The recipe out of Raw Food Cleanse is actually not a raw food recipe. <gasps> Sorry. But it is a wonderful transitional recipe for something I've called balancing broth. It's going to be the foundational soup base for our miso mushroom soup that I'm making. I'm also going to make pad thai. Let's go in the raw food kitchen and check it out. This morning I woke up and I told my husband that I had been wanting to do just the three day energy boost mini cleanse in my book raw food cleanse and he said that he wanted to join me. So on day two of that cleanse it calls for balancing broth for dinner. So let me show you what I put in my balancing broth. Um, I put two yellow onions. I will not take the skin off of these. I'm just going to coarsely chop them up. You know, you want to wash and scrub everything well, but two onions will go in. I'm going to throw in three parsnips because I have them and I want to use them up. I have some carrots, celery, a couple of Yukon gold potatoes, some thyme out of my garden, a couple of bay leaves. I'll probably put in six cloves of garlic just because I like garlic. A couple of cups of fresh organic broccoli chopped up. I'll throw in a handful of fresh basil, some chopped parsley, and then I'll put in a little bit of kombu or kelp seaweed, which will really help add some saltiness to the broth without overpowering it. So we'll just scrub and chop all of these ingredients throw them in the big stock pot with about 12 cups of water. We'll let that simmer on the stove for about two hours. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, wonderful. I wish you could smell this. Just the chopped vegetables with all of the herbs just simmering on the stove is creating a very intoxicating smell, very earthy smell in the house. So it's definitely a gift to your senses. But we're gonna let this simmer on the stove for a while. We really want to draw the essence out of all of the fruits and vegetables um, and we're just creating a vegetable broth is all we're going to do. So we're going to let that continue to do its thing. Let's come over here. Um, in my book, Falling Into Rob, just uh, printed everything out, put it into a three ring binder. On page 42 of the recipe portion, we are going to make pad thai. So we'll go ahead and prepare and chop up all of the ingredients while the balancing broth is simmering. Um, first I'll make a little light marinade for the vegetables I'm getting ready to chop up. Uh, extra virgin cold pressed olive oil. I'm going to add coconut secrets, coconut aminos. This is kind of my new favorite substitute for namashoyu or soy sauce or wheat free tamari. It's really a good product. I, I It's different tasting but when you mix it in with a marinade it's excellent. You can go to Natural Zing. Uh, My Whole Foods has it now, so check that out. Also going to add in a little bit of maple syrup. I'm going to put about a third or a quarter of this Serrano chili finely diced, a couple of cloves of garlic, and just a little bit of sea salt. That's going to make a marinade dressing that we are going to soak all of these julienne, soon to be julienne vegetables in. Uh, red onion. I got some red cabbage. You could use any kind of cabbage red bell pepper, carrots, and the recipe actually calls for zucchini, which I didn't buy, forgot to buy it. I'm gonna use parsnips in their place, a Granny Smith apple, some cilantro, I think, did I say garlic? Put in a little bit of chopped garlic, and then I just cracked into a young Thai coconut. We'll remove the meat from this, and I'll just slice it into noodles. So that's gonna be the noodles for the pad thai. Now, when I say that I'm going to julienne these vegetables, I'm probably mainly going to use a knife, but on the carrots and parsnips, um, I may use this. This is a julienne peeler, 
Super cheap. I think I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can find it at some grocery stores. Carry it. It's like $6, something like that. This is a great kitchen tool. Everybody can afford this, and you don't need to get a fancy spiralizer. Um, you can actually use this to make noodles. You can do zucchini noodles and everything else with it. The other thing, if I was really feeling ambitious, is I could put the shredding attachment onto my food processor and just run the ingredients through that as well. So that's an option. So we're going to chop all this up, julienne it, let it soak in the marinade. I will also make, um, it calls for an, sorry about that glare, an almond chili sauce which will go on top of the pad thai. I'll show you those ingredients in just a minute. I just came over to check on the balancing broth and oh, there's a nice big piece of seaweed. Um, and it to me looks like it's done. It's only been on the stove about an hour and um, th when the vegetables really start to fall apart, like the broccoli is totally falling apart, um, I've just turned the heat off and I'm going to let this sit and come to room temperature before I strain it into ball or cur jars. We'll store some in the refrigerator. I'll put some in the freezer to use at a later date. But today we're going to use um, about three or four cups in our miso mushroom soup. So let's let that cool down for a little bit. Come over here and you can see what I've been working on. There are the ingredients to the pad thai. It's marinating right now. And I use that julienne peeler literally for everything other than the red onion and the coconut. The coconut they really made nice noodles. I was fortunate enough to get uh, a little bit more mature Thai coconut. You know, sometimes the insides of those Thai coconuts are real jelly-like, but this one was a little bit more firm, which is what you want if you can find it. You never know. You never know what you're going to get, but this one was good, so I must be living right. <laughs> Next, we're going to put together the almond chili sauce for the pad thai. This is going to be what we drizzle over the top of it when we get ready to serve it. Um, the ingredients are a little bit of almond butter. We're going to grate some fresh ginger, squeeze some fresh lemon juice, again a little bit of maple syrup. I'm going to open up a couple cloves of these garlics, um, a little bit more coconut aminos. I'm going to pit this date. Um, we're going to cut up, probably, I probably won't cut up the whole serrano chili because I think I've already got things hot enough here. And then we're going to use water as needed to blend all of these ingredients together in the Vitamix. And then I'll put it into some sort of a like um, a little gravy boat or maybe an old agave nectar container where I can just drizzle it on top of the pad thai to serve. Okay, I have drained off the balancing broth and I have added four cups to this saucepan. Now, I've added a little bit more than the recipe calls for because I'm going to be feeding my husband and I both tonight. So I just upped the amounts just a little bit on all the ingredients. So four cups of balancing broth, a heaping cup of baby spinach will go into this warm broth. I've got a little over a cup of freshly sliced shiitake mushrooms. Now these were fresh mushrooms. You may not have fresh in your area. Feel free to buy dried shiitakes soak them to reconstitute them and then slice them. It'll be just just fine. Um, the recipe calls for scallions or green onions. I thought it would be more interesting to add leeks. So I've cut up about a half a cup of leeks, one teaspoon of fresh minced garlic, and then I'm going to um, shave or grate some fresh ginger into the mix. I'm also going to add about two tablespoons of unpasteurized sweet white miso just to richen the broth up a little bit and at the end I'm going to finish it off with a drizzling of sesame oil. You can either use just the regular cold pressed sesame oil or for a little bit more rich flavor if you're not 100% raw you could use the toasted sesame oil. This is just going to give you a little bit more density to the flavor but you're just going to want to use a drizzling of that and then I think I'll scatter a few little sesame seeds over that. So I'm going to go ahead, finish up the miso mushroom soup, the pad thai, and I'll show you the finished product. The finished product, miso mushroom soup. I allowed all the ingredients to um, just kind of marry together on a very low heat on the stove for about 15 minutes. And it's just absolutely delicious. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it on a cold autumn or winter's evening. It really warms you up. Okay, the next thing is 
pad thai. I've just drizzled some of the almond chili sauce on the top of it. I've got a couple of lime wedges that you could use to squeeze over it. Sprinkled a little bit of black and white sesame seeds just as a garnish. I can't wait to dig in, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Foodie Friday, and I'll see you again soon.